Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Jack. Thanks for joining me for this video. And in this video, we will be covering the reasons as to why many people who choose to focus on weight loss end up losing weight initially, but then in the long run, they seem to gain weight ultimately in the end. So in this video, I hope to explain to you physiologically or what's actually taking place inside your body when someone suddenly loses a lot of weight. And for this video, I really do suggest watching it all the way to the end. I will be building upon concepts along the entire way to hopefully make this as clear as possible to understand. And so without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So to begin with, I want to make you aware that this is the beginning of uh, several videos that I'll be making over a period of time to educate you on the appropriate way to go about weight loss and what various studies and what science has shown to work and what does not work. This is a topic that I discuss almost daily inside of my pain clinic and it's something that brings so many patients to see me and it's the top reason as to why so many people starting in their late 30s or in their 40s start to show up and they have a lot of chronic pain issues, mainly involving the back, the hips, the knees, and ultimately it's just laws of physics. Uh, your body, your spine, your musculoskeletal system was made to hold only but a certain amount of weight and much like a car is designed to hold a certain amount of weight, so are the support structures within your body. And when you exceed that over a period of decades, you get away with it when you're younger, but as we age and our cells don't regenerate as well, all of that ends up catching up to us and it's only a matter of time if you're significantly overweight that you will develop these chronic pain issues. So over the many years, that I've been advising people on weight loss, what I notice is that a lot of people end up losing weight initially pretty quickly. However, over a period of time, they seem to start gaining that weight back and in many instances, they put on more weight than they actually lost before they ever started this weight loss journey. Some of these people, I would have them even keep a food and drink diary and bring it in and we, I would go over it with them. And I truly believe them. I started seeing this trend where some of my patients were literally eating and drinking hardly anything at all, and yet they were still struggling with weight loss. So I started to do a deeper dive and started doing the research to try and figure out what the heck was going on. Through the process of going through all this research, I wanted to understand physiologically what happens within the human body. I'm an anesthesiologist, so you know, physiology is kind of my thing, and I like to understand what exactly is taking place for this to occur. And in my research, it all sort of culminated when I came across this book. It's called The Obesity Code. It's written by Dr. Jason Fung, and he's a nephrologist. It was that moment when I read his book where it basically summarized everything I was finding on my own through my own research. And so it was really, really awesome to see someone sort of confirm all of the theories that I had in the beginning. So I'll put the link down below. And having said all of that, I'm gonna share all this information over a series of videos, as I mentioned before. So make sure you're subscribed, you have the notification bell on, and an early thumbs up, hitting that like button to push it out to the YouTube algorithm algorithm so that other people can benefit from this video and you sharing it yourself would be much appreciated. So tell me if this sounds like someone you know or perhaps yourself. You notice that lately you've let yourself go. Whether due to the stress of a pandemic or maybe a relationship ended with someone or something stressful has occurred in your life. You find that you're not sleeping well, you're comfort eating, and the next thing you know you're not fitting into your clothes anymore. So you wake up one day and you go about losing weight. You start reducing the amount of calories that you put into your body with the expectation that it will lead to weight loss long term because that's just what everybody tells you, right? That a calorie is a calorie and that your weight is due to a calorie imbalance. Eat less and move more. That's the common saying, that's the mantra that everybody preaches. However, that's the problem. You see, all calories are not created equal per se. Sure, as a unit of energy, they are. A calorie is simply a way to measure a unit of energy. It tells you how much energy your body could get from eating or drinking something. However, your body handles, say, 10 calories of almonds or olive oil in a vastly different way than it would handle, say, 10 calories from a Twinkie. The problem is that if you just focus on the calories, you're missing the bigger picture and you're setting yourself up for failure in the long term. So the moral of the story is, rule number one, 
stop counting calories. It does not work in the long run and numerous studies have shown this. There's a lot more going on inside of your body and simply counting your calories is not going to get you to where you want to be. The bigger picture really is how your body handles the contents of these calories. If you eat say that handful of almonds, it is high in fiber and protein. Fiber and protein are proven to stimulate the feeling of satiety or feeling full through the help of the satiety hormone known as leptin. And for those that don't know, hormones to put it simply are simply chemical substances that act like messenger molecules in the body to cause certain things to occur. And leptin communicates with the part of your brain called the hypothalamus to tell you whether or not you are full. Fiber is good for your overall health, especially for your gut biome. And for those of you interested, please be sure and check out the gut biome series that I did. I did a three part series where I go through how to nourish your gut and how it's tied to so many diseases, especially chronic diseases in this day and age. And what foods you should eat and what foods you should avoid. So if you're so interested, please be sure and check out that series. What we know is that about 10 to 15% of the calories in almonds are actually absorbed within the body. And this is compared to the Twinkie that you ate, which is purely processed and refined food that is very quickly absorbed into the body, causing a huge spike in your insulin. And that spike in insulin is important because we're gonna dive more into that here shortly. But an interesting fact is that people with a leptin deficiency are actually thin. However, study after study has shown that if you give someone leptin, they did not lose weight. And it didn't matter what other hormones you injected people with. There's all these other hormones like ghrelin, which is uh, tells us when we are hungry, or a peptide YY or a cholecystokinin, and they tell us that we are full as well. If we inject any of these things, there was not a weight difference in various types of studies. And another interesting fact is that, in fact, people that are obese actually have four times the amount of leptin. And the reason is, leptin resistance. This means that their leptin signaling has basically broken down and the brain is simply not getting the message anymore. And so ultimately the question is, what causes all of this? Insulin resistance or chronically high levels of insulin as well as inflammation of the hypothalamus is the culprit here. Insulin is actually the main driver of obesity. That's why an anti-inflammatory diet, getting enough sleep, and proper regular exercise is so vital not only to pain and arthritis, but also to weight gain as well. You can think of the hypothalamus as a thermostat for a weight control within your body. This will make a bit more sense here shortly, but it essentially regulates signals that tell the body how much energy it needs and how to expend that energy as well. Obesity ends up occurring when the hypothalamus orders the body to increase the amount of fat to reach a certain set body weight. Dr. Alfred Froelich from the University of Vienna in actually 1890 described a young boy who had a hypothalamic lesion. And he had a growth there, a tumor, and the boy gained a ton of weight all of a sudden. Brain tumors, trauma to this area of the brain, all have been shown to cause massive obesity that is oftentimes uncontrollable even if if someone is consuming only 500 calories per day. So if we're trying to inject all these different hormones that we talked about previously, like ghrelin and leptin and all these things, and there's no effect, then what does make a difference? What hormones have been shown to make a vast amount of difference when it comes to weight gain or weight loss? Insulin and cortisol. Cortisol, if you follow my channel, I talk about it quite a bit. It's a stress hormone that's released. It's all the more reason why having stress under control and meditation and all these things are so important. However, we, for the sake of this video, we won't really be focusing on cortisol, we'll be talking a lot more about insulin, namely insulin resistance. So insulin, what is it? It's a fat storage hormone. It takes glucose or your body's energy source out of the blood and basically brings it into the cells to use it as energy. After all, that's mainly why we eat, right? So just like the fuel within your car, glucose is the energy for your body to keep it running. And insulin is a key factor in the regulation of energy breakdown and metabolism. And I can make anyone obese simply by injecting them full of insulin all the time. And this has been shown in study after study. And the same can be true if you actually lack insulin. So let's take the example of someone with type one diabetes. One of the hallmarks of type one diabetes is that the patient is thin. What ends up happening is that within the pancreas, the cells that make insulin actually get destroyed. And so there is a insulin deficiency within these patients and they end up becoming quite thin because of 
that. And because there's no insulin pulling all that glucose out of the blood into the cells, they get very high blood sugars. There is actually this disease called diabolemia. And what that is, is type one diabetic patients who suddenly want to lose weight, what they end up doing is no longer injecting themselves with their daily insulin. Because without insulin, they do not gain weight and they actually lose weight. Now, I don't need to tell you that this is very, very dangerous to do and can be fatal because situations like that, your blood sugar can get so high that it can actually lead to a very, very poor outcome. So now let's compare that to type two diabetes. And one of the hallmarks of people with type two diabetes is that they are obese. And in those situations, what ends up happening is that you end up with the same thing as type one diabetics, which is high blood sugars. However, it gets there through a totally different pathway. Their glucose is constantly high and the pancreas is constantly trying to put out more and more insulin. And over time, if you keep revving up the amount of insulin that your pancreas is putting out, your cells actually become resistant. And so what that means is that they don't respond to insulin very well anymore. So the glucose is no longer really pulled out of the blood anymore and it stays there, you get high blood sugar and that feedback mechanism causes more insulin to be released. And ultimately, the biggest problem that you end up with is actually insulin resistance. And it is this insulin resistance that is the main culprit for people to be overweight. And so obesity isn't so much a problem with food as a problem with hormones within our body. It's a complete hormonal imbalance brought upon by insulin resistance due to years of poor diet choices, as well as stress, inflammation, and and how often you eat. And all that will be sort of addressed in future videos in a bit more detail. So why is insulin resistance so darn important? The reason is that it sets the thermostat at the hypothalamus within the brain. So what the heck does that mean? So think of the thermostat at your house. You set it to 70 degrees and say it's the summertime and it starts getting colder and colder inside your house. Well, once it reaches say 68 or 66 degrees, well the thermostat kicks in and it brings it back up to 70 degrees because it's trying to create a homeostasis or a balance of the temperature within your house. Well, you can think of your body going through the exact same thing when you're suddenly choosing to diet and lose a bunch of weight over a period of time. Sure, initially you see the pounds come off and you're feeling pretty good about it. However, when you do this over a period of weeks and months, what ends up happening is that the hypothalamus, which regulates metabolism and all these other things, ends up dialing everything back. So it ends up slowing the body and slowing metabolism down to a significant degree. Your body's internal thermostat controlling weight at the hypothalamus kicks in and it needs to bring homeostasis back within the body. So ultimately you diet, you lose weight and you're happy. Your body, however, knows that after years of being at a certain weight that it is starving, even though there's plenty of energy storage in the form of fat. So after those weeks and months of dieting or calorie restriction, you start to feel really hungry. You start to feel tired. You might feel foggy headed. You feel cold very easily. And your heart rate, your breathing, your blood pressure, all of this ends up decreasing to a degree as your body is trying to slow the amount of energy expenditure that ends up happening. And your body is doing all of this and conserving this energy expenditure because it thinks that there's a lack of food or fuel source within the environment because it is not quote unquote normal for your body to drive to that amount of weight in that period of time so it slows everything down to conserve that energy. And then what happens after this period of quote unquote starvation, your weight loss begins to plateau. So then you eat even less perhaps and again you lose some weight but again your body responds by slowing metabolism down even further. And by the way, for those of you that follow the channel, I talk about homeostasis or the balance within the body a lot. It's mainly due to my understanding about CBD or cannabidiol and why I've done so many videos on this and why it's so vitally important to your health and wellness. And believe it or not, there are actually a lot of studies currently looking at CBD as well as our body's own endocannabinoid system. That's our body's own cannabis system that controls homeostasis, which is involved in weight loss as well. And I suspect that there will be many studies to come out over the years looking at how the body's cannabinoid system actually affects weight as well. So check out my series if you're so interested and want to learn a bit more about that. So let's get back to the diet and weight loss struggles. Ultimately, on a long enough timeline, one can only feel pretty crummy for a certain period of time. This is not really sustainable long term. So let's say one day you decide that, you know what, I can't keep feeling this horrible. Let me just come off of this diet and I'm just going to consume less calories than I did before. 
Let's take the example where before when you were gaining weight, you calculated that you were consuming about 4,000 calories a day. And now you told yourself that you're going to limit yourself, let's say to 3,500 calories a day. Therefore, you believe that you will likely continue to lose or maybe maintain your weight loss or say you're going to reduce it to 2,500 or just pick a number. However, the problem is that your internal weight thermostat or metabolic rate has now been set lower. So before you dieted, your body was using say about 3,000, 3,500 calories a day, let's say. However, due to the hormonal changes that have now happened in your body from the starvation that your body believes it went through, your new metabolic rate is set a lot lower. So now, even though you are eating less, you're gaining weight and this new metabolic rate goes on indefinitely. And that is one of the main reasons why people gain more weight than they lose in the long run. And so with that, we will wrap this video up here. And again, this is the beginning of a brand new playlist on my channel where I will be focusing on obesity, nutrition, and the science behind all of this. And for the next video, I was thinking about doing it on the topic of how to sort of reverse a lot of this. Let me know if that's what you guys would like to see and you know, write down below what you guys would like to see videos done on and I'll see if I can uh, get to researching that for you. Your comments are always welcome and it kind of guides me as to what you, the audience, would actually like to see and hear about and learn more about. And as always, if you have criticisms, I welcome them, but please put them down there in a very constructive manner. Just be nice. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, with this video, I hope you have a better understanding and that old saying of, you know, just eat less and move more, it just simply does not work. Counting calories doesn't work. Eat less, moving more does not work. It has not worked since the late 1970s as various nutrition experts and doctors and organizations, you know, constantly preach that mantra. And yet all we have seen is the obesity rate continue to skyrocket within the Western world. And so many studies have demonstrated that it's just bogus. It's, there's absolutely no science behind demonstrating that that works for you long term. And so I hope I've shed some light and educated you as to why exactly this does not work. And only by spreading and sharing this knowledge will more and more people start to realize how to go about weight loss in a better manner once you have a better understanding of what exactly is taking place within the human body because the human body is just amazingly complex. And so with that, I'll leave you. Take care, stay safe, bye-bye, pura vida.